Hey neighbor, come on in and sit a while and we're going to talk about some fall gardening. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. You know this heat has really had me beat down, but I'm starting to come back alive now. I think I'm getting into the gardening mood. <laughs> mode a little bit mm -hmm. but this had me beat down beat down beat down we got off vacation to come back and i get out there and try to do something that gets so hot but i made it a point to get out there early in the mornings and late in the afternoons when it's not quite as bad and i'm doing better at it yeah i've got my areas cleaned up that made me feel better and uh just planning the just getting ready for the show and planning the what we're going to plant and pulling the seeds and getting everything ready has kind of got me a little excited yeah a little bit in the mood there a little bit in the mood yeah get something growing again so everybody always struggles with fall gardening and we're going to try to tell you today some ways to do that and also some varieties that perform best at the first planting in the fall so we're going to plant some here on the show we're for going to show us. you our favorite varieties yeah. what we're planting this and year and why we're planting those and then we're going to talk about ones you need a heat mat for and ones you don't heat a heat mat for for this time of year because fall garden is a little different than spring gardening because you know we're dealing with this heat now where we're trying to germinate seeds when the springtime is just off it's still cool but first things first, let's move this out of the way. We got a little snack here we want to show everybody. And I'm sure you, some of you, or sure you, some of you, <laughs> are familiar with this. But this is a something we've been growing for a few years now, edamame, which is a soybean. It's a variety of soybean that absolutely is delicious. Mama Hoss grew these in our new raised beds down there. They're easy to grow. Soybeans, like any other bean, don't need much fertilizer. They just, uh, they mm. need some water, tender love and care. Tell them what they look like. Where did you just, you ate them. So we boil them whole. You, you pick them, harvest them when the pods get filled out there. We boil them whole with a little, and put a little sea salt on them and you just hull them out there and eat the little bean inside of it. Sort of like eating a peanut. Very nutritious and they're good. I think the sea salt, did you put the red one salt on this? No. The uh, the salt makes it really good. I could eat the whole bowl there. They have a more taste to them. The more you eat, the more you want them. Really good health benefits, especially for those women going through menopause. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Hot flashes, yeah. Very good. Huh. So you, I've noticed this the way you eat them. You just kind of put them in there and rake them through your teeth and they all yeah, come out. Yeah, I could do a peanut. Huh? No, not like that. That's not working no. for me. Uh, I made look, a mess of them. Uh, you pop them? Oh, you got to pop them first. Pop them. Mm, okay. I've been shilling mine out. Anyway, I can make a, I can make a meal of those. Also, folks, we got something to show you right here. <coughs> that one had a bone in it. So I got this package in the mail earlier this week. It said, Greg and Sheila, enjoy purple hull, <coughs> excuse me, purple hull pea jelly. Have you ever heard of purple hull pea jelly before? Not until I saw their video. Of how well, Perry Hill Farms, folks, has got a video out showing how to make purple hull pea jelly. Stuffy is showing you exactly step by step how to do it. And we are going to taste it today. We've not tasted it yet. I've never heard of such. I think it's interesting. You use, you use everything. You use the pee to put in the freezer. You use the hole to make jelly. All right. So let's get this little bread out here and do a taste test on this right here. This is not going to be real good for our diet. Yeah. But. We got to so try. the whole Hoss team, minus a few, has started a Hoss lean diet for the next three months. There's a few of us here that could stand to lose a couple of pounds, me being one of the main ones. And uh, we figured that's a good way to do it, involve everybody. Mm. And there's some prizes involved, <coughs> excuse me, for the biggest loser. That's good. It is good. Oops, I'm making this. It's got that zing on the end of it that I kind of like for jelly. Mm. Man. That's really good. That would be good on my homemade biscuit. That you can't have for 12 weeks. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Move that to the side. Thank first. you, Perry Hills. Go check out Perry Hills' pea hole jelly video. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so we're going to get into some uh, one more thing, housekeeping, before I get into it. Sometime this month, we're going to start putting in these patches right here. These patches that's going to come in every order. Believe it or not, a lot of people's got into patches. I've got into patches a little bit. These are Velcro patches. I keep one on my backpack right there. It says Get Dirty Hoss Patch. So these are, I don't know how long we're going to keep them in the orders, but I know they're going to start sometime in August putting those in every order that goes out. So there you have a good patch here. We got all kind of exciting things going on as far as what are you talking about? And orders. Housekeeping, talk about the website. All right, folks. So earlier this week, we uh, put a new website in and uh, launched it over now. Had a few bugs there, little issues we to work out. We still have a few bugs. Yeah, We're working on them. Let's hope not. Uh, but, but if you have trouble going to the website, you need to clear your history and clear your cache, and that'll help you get there because it is a new website. You still go to hostools.com, still same domain name, but it's a different website. We're excited about it. And you should have got an email. Um, from us saying to sign on to the new website and you will have to set your account up again But once you set it up, you'll be able to see all your old orders from the old website And you know, there's gonna be some things that needs to be changed on there in the next few weeks If you see something that's wrong on there, hey, don't hesitate Drop email us an us. email. Yep, let us know Because we're going through it line by line ourselves Wow, them things is good As much as I like the jelly, I think this is a lot of help there for me yeah, this is healthier for you. It is. Might right. help with your hot flashes. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about what we're going to plant, all right? What do we need? need? You want to go ahead and be putting your indentions in there as I talk? Because I always like to indent um, my... Put them up, so Put them up so you quit eating those. So you want to talk about what equipment you might need to Yeah, so the this? weird thing is about most of these most of these things we're going to talk about today, you don't need a heat mat this time of year to germinate them. And if you've got a greenhouse, you don't necessarily need to be concerned about supplemental heat because we know with heat, most of these fall cool weather crops like germination temperature around the 75 to 80 degree range. So that's perfect on the inside of your... Uh, your carport, maybe your sped bare room, something like that right there that you keep climate controlled. You can start these inside. If you do it in a greenhouse, just make sure you keep them watered. They will germinate in higher temperatures, but you don't necessarily need it. For you guys out there that don't have all the fancy equipment, these are easy to start right here. All right, so let's move into the first one right here. And we're gonna talk about some of the ones we transplant today and some of the ones we direct seed. First one I'm going to plant here is going to be top chop collard. Now we're going to grow this top chop collard out as a plant, but you can direct seed it. But for the last few years, I have been growing my collards from transplants because I've been growing some of these other varieties, such as top bunch, such as top chop, and I grew some Morse heading. I blew some blue collards back during the uh, spring that I didn't have a lot of seeds on, so I had to be real careful with my seeds. And with seed costs or what they are nowadays, I find it better off to transplant my collars. And that's what we're going to do here today. So how many collars will you want to plant? How many rows? we got 18 rows here of nine foot rows. I'd say let's plant two of these. There you go. Plant two of those. And sometimes we'll put more than one seed in a, uh, a hole, come back and, and plant them out there. Now, we got Morse Heading on our website here. Morse Heading is a good collard. You guys up in North Carolina, they tell me up there that's the same thing that y'all call cabbage collards. The cabbage collards is a term that's used all over the place and it's different. Sometimes it can move to different type varieties, but it's pretty much the same as the Morse Heading. These different strains of collards that they call the cabbage collards. I grew them out this spring. Very good flavor to them. We have that Morse heading on our site here, and that's a good variety to grow. However, I would prefer not to plant it right now. I would plant it a little bit later. Now, I'm talking about zone eight here. I would plant it just a little bit later, maybe my second or third planting. The reason I like the top chop for, for my first planting is 
It's resistant or it's slow bolting. It doesn't bolt near as fast as most of the other ones do, including Top Bunch, which you may know is one of my favorite ones. And probably one of the most popular collars growing today is Top Chop, I mean Top Bunch. So Top Chop is a new one that's come out to help with the bolting process. That's the reason we chose it for our first planting there. Second one we got here, well, we're gonna go ahead and get these planted because they take so long, and that's Jade Cross Brussels sprouts. Now, Jade Cross is pretty much the standard. There's not a lot of varieties of Brussels sprouts out there, and Jade's, uh, Jade Cross is one I've grown before. It does fine. Long time to grow these out. That's the reason days we're gonna children? get these things planted early, I believe. It is 90. 90, and it can be more than that. <laughs> That's according to how much uh, heat you should get on it. Brussels sprouts is another one. I always transplant Brussels sprouts because it takes so long to, uh, to grow these out. Now, I normally don't grow a lot of them, but I like to do that. Uh, we have a red one on our website. They've grown before, but I don't think it produces quite as much as this Jade Cross does. The so Jade Cross, if you're just going to plant one, that's the variety I would go with. More likely, it may be early spring before you harvest some of these. If you want to test your patience, yep, absolutely. grow Brussels sprouts. Well worth it. There are a lot of people talk about, you know, I'm not going to grow them because of that. But you tell you, these things are delicious to me if you put them in the oven and roast them with some sea salt. We, uh, we just love them. It's worth it. It's kind of a treat for us. Now, we don't plant a lot of them, but we do plant a few. Got to get into broccoli. Everybody loves broccoli. Oh, broccoli, broccoli. All right. So the first one we're going to plant for our fall rotation is going to be green magic broccoli. And there's not another heat resistant or better one to grow in your first slot in the fall than green magic. That being said, I'll probably switch up on my second and third planting to maybe Imperial or Godzilla. I like both of those varieties a lot, but for my first plant where it's going to be warm, we got to go with Green Magic. Green Magic doesn't make the largest head out there, but it is a good all-around variety that I use for my last planting in the spring and for my first planting in the fall. And uh, 55 days to maturity there. Now, I'm going to plant the Burgundy Broccoli. And um, it has an excellent tolerance to a wide range of temps. It actually says in some places you can overwinter it. Really? Well, mm -hmm. we should be able to here. Yeah. We should be able it to It said here. the um, leaves are not frost tolerant, but the heads are. So if you know you're going to get a heavy frost, you can either cover it up or go ahead and harvest your heads. Now, this is one of these newer type sprouting broccoli that you're going to need to pinch at first. Oh, look, this one comes with Oh, the... look there, yeah. I forgot about those. Some of our varieties, our, our best set of varieties, come with the uh, little garden marker already in the pack there. All right, on the broccoli here, we got two of these. We got Asper Brock and we got Burgundy Brock, and both of these are what they consider sprouting broccolis. Uh, the main thing about these is, is when they do start budding out, you want to go in there and pinch that main bud out on these right here to start with. And what that's going to do is, is encourage that plant to sprout out more because that's what we're growing, the growing sprouts here. This burgundy broccoli here, we tasted first in Ohio over in zone six a couple of years ago, growing it in the middle of the summertime. So you guys up in five and six of there, y'all can grow this one pretty much all during the summer. Us down here in zone eight, nine, probably seven, we're not gonna be able to grow this during the summertime. We're gonna have to grow it in the fall and the spring. But it is good, it's excellent in salads and things like that. Has a kind of a unique flavor to it. I think I probably like the burgundy flavor better than yeah. the green to you. Yeah, and, and it's 40 days, so it's a fast. Oh yeah, it's gonna be quick. Um, and it is best, it's said to be transplanted versus direct seed. Oh, absolutely. All right, folks, we got to talk about cauliflower. Now, are these coated? Yep, those are coated. Those are coated seeds right there. They're not raw seeds. They're coated to help the be easier to plant. And you'll notice that when you start planting them, they're a little bit easier to plant. 
Those small seeds can be tough to get one or two seeds in there. Next thing we're going to talk about, folks, is cauliflower. And then the first one I'm planting this year is Minute Man. The reason I'm going to plant Mr. Minute Man there is because it is an early maturing variety and this is also heat tolerant. So we know we're going to have some, some heat in, you know, September when we transplant these out there. They're 50 days of maturity here. So Minute Man fits the bill for our first planting in the fall there. Also, if you're going to plant late in the springtime, this is probably the variety I would recommend right there. It's a white cauliflower. It's a good one there. It's fairly well adapted to all regions there, but it is known for its heat tolerance. And we're going to plant us a few of those. We don't plant a lot of cauliflower, do we? We don't plant a few. Now we've got another one that I'm real fond of called Twister. But Twister to me is more of a second and a third planting in the fall than the first planting is. That's the reason I'm going with Minute Man. And we got to talk about kale. A few varieties of kale out there. You know, I get hung up on some varieties sometimes, and I'm hung up on this one right here. La Sonato, some people call it dinosaur kale. This is an Italian heirloom from way back in the day. This one right here is probably the most popular culinary kale out there. If you go to Olive Garden and you order their, what's that soup that they, Tuscan, mm -hmm. the Tuscan soup, it has the Lacinato kale in it. Um, Tuscani. I Tuscani, think. yeah. It is a good one. It has a very unique, good flavor to me. It's easy to easy to grow. It's easy to wash. It has those long, slender leaves to it. So I plant Lacinato kale. Now, can you direct seed, uh, kale seed? Yes. I grow my kale seed from transplants. It just works better for me. And there again, all the ones that I've mentioned so far, you can germinate 75 degrees easily, just room temperature there. All right, here's another one. We got those, got a nice little marker there. All right, the next one we got here, folks, that I'm planting is all top turnip. All top turnip is known for what just the name says there for making those tops. Now we don't care a lot for turnip roots, therefore I don't normally try to grow much turnip roots. We just like to eat the top turnips. That's the reason we love this all top variety right here. 50 days to maturity. You can transplant this, but I'm gonna direct seed this one right here. This one does better for me direct seeding it into the ground there. So I'm gonna direct seed that one there. You know, we got the old purple top variety that's been around forever. I'm gonna direct seed those. Oh, okay. We got those and we also got a white one there. It's got a nice white root to it. All right, let's move on to radishes. Radishes, I'm gonna direct seed into the ground because we're talking about 25, 30 days to maturity. Um, I was reading on radishes or the touch tone that I like. That's the beat. That's the beat? Yep. Okay, never mind, I'll say that. <laughs> Spiel for the beats. <laughs> Roxanne radish is one I grew last spring and I'm gonna plant it again this fall. It's a, uh, it's a good variety. It's very consistent, which I like. It's an all-American winter, which if you don't know what an all-American winter is, it's mean it's been trialed all over the country and it's been graded against other radishes and it came out as a winter. The Roxanne radish very consistent, but what I love about Roxanne radish is it's resistant to splitting. You know, a lot of times you grow these radishes out and they split up on you. This one looks good one right here that resists the splitting, so it makes a good, um, you forget the kale. No, I was only gonna do one row and I just changed. Changed your mind? I changed my mind. It's easy to get caught up when you start planting. So that's right now I'm gonna grow Roxanne radish. I got hung up on this one last spring, did wonderful for me, so I'm gonna grow it again. Will I mix up and go with another variety on my second, third plant? Probably so. Yep, folks, we got Savannah mustard right here. Savannah mustard. This is a favorite we've been going for for a long time. You can grow this out in 20 days. So I normally direct seed this. I have transplanted it. does okay. But I normally direct seed this right here. It's a very mild mustard. So if you don't look like the old Florida bar, uh, broadleaf mustards, the more tangier mustards, and you want something that's more milder, the savannah mustard is good. It's actually kind of a cross between a spinach and a mustard there. 
So this is a favorite. Everybody that grows that I talk in to grow in this right here always mm -hmm. just raves and raves, right? It's very smooth. 20 days to maturity, so it's quick. Going to direct seed that. All right, we've got to talk about our cabbage because we're going to need to make some sauerkraut this, this fall, this winter. Green boy cabbage, and green boy cabbage is a medium size cabbage. It is heat resistant, so it's a good heat tolerant variety that we're going to plant first in the fall. Second, third plants will probably they're mixed up. I may go with some cheers, stonehead for the second or third, but I think green boy is going to be the one to go with first. And uh, 85 days to mature to here, so we know cabbages take a while, so we need to go ahead and get these started early on. And green boy cabbage is going to be going. It's highly adapted to pretty much all regions right there. So we grow our cabbage out from transplants always. We never direct seed our cabbage. Now this is a little different. This is not a quote, quote, fall crop. This is what we consider a summer crop, but we're gonna grow a fall planting of it because we love our green beans. Hoss, green blaze, bush bean. We got to plant some of these. Of course, we're gonna direct seed these in the garden right here. Um, 55 days maturity. So we can plant these all the way up to probably the middle of September there and make a good crop. Green Blaze is known for its heat resistance. Loves the heat and it does fine there. So we're gonna grow these right here. They load up, they're really tender, stringless, and uh, it's a great variety right here, good straight variety. And as I said before, I don't know why anybody would wanna grow another variety than the Green Blaze. It's just a wonderful one for us. All right, let's move into beets. We've got a little of these beets, and I'm gonna direct seed beets. The one I'm gonna grow is Merlin. Mm -hmm. Do you know why I'm gonna grow Merlin? Mm -hmm. Merlin has the highest sugar content of all the beets. And that's the reason I'm gonna grow it. 55 days maturity. Some people have transplanted before. I prefer direct seed my beets there. And if we make some pickled beets, this is gonna be a great variety right mm -hmm. here. Like a high sugar content of them. But you're planting a different variety. Yeah, so I wanna plant the um Da, 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 da. Touchstone beet, and the reason I like it, I like the flavor. It's not quite as earthy. Um, it retains its color once it's cooked, and it doesn't bleed out like the red beets do. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit larger beet to me too. It's 55 mm -hmm. days maturity, so it's a, it's a now, good quick crop. And it did say it was multi germ. Multi germ. So it, it will lends need itself better to direct seeding. Yes, and but you do need to thin it out because yep. if you have them too close together, you'll have those small beets. Right, right. So thin it out there, plant them in there. These are actually pellets. Did you know that? No. These are pellets. That helps a little bit with the uh, hand seeding of those right here. So she's going to plant her beets. I'm going to plant my beets. Oh, how about cilantro there? Cilantro. You know, fall of the year, we got to grow some cilantro there. Now, we direct seed, uh, excuse me, we transplant our cilantro there. We plant it in our tree, uh, seed trays and we'll uh, transplant it out. Did you know that was a member of the carrot family? I did not. 55 days of maturity. Mm -hmm. We don't do good with these all in the summertime. It's too hot. They're it's too hot. Um, yeah. And it's a great... Um, a tractor for the beneficial insects. Um, it's a cut and come again. Mm -hmm. it does excellent in the freeze dryer. It's one of my favorite herbs to do in the freeze dryer because yeah. it just retains that, that flavor, punch, that yeah. punch. Santo cilantro out here. So there you have a 55 days maturity. That's an early fall, early spring, and a fall crop for us. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna move on to a couple more of these direct seeding. So, Mama Hoss is gonna plant little marble pea in her raised beds. And it's a 60 day to maturity. Now, why are you gonna plant this one? Because you can eat it as immature pods, saute in it. Snow pea. Like a snow pea. You can eat it you know, raw on salads, or you can let them fill in and shell them, mm -hmm. and you can can or freeze them. Or yep. eat them. So there's just so many different, more options yep. with that. Yeah, it's a good variety. 60 days of maturity. Now think about these English type peas here. You got to have your timing right. So you can plant these 
Uh, we'll probably start planting these about the 1st of September and you could plant these all the way up to probably, what would you say, the end of October? Maybe the middle of October. You need them to get established well before, before the cold the, weather comes yeah. in. I mean, they can handle some cold weather. They just can't handle it when they're small. So yeah. you need to get a decent-sized plant, then they can handle the cold and weather. You need somewhere that you can trellis them. They do much better trellis. Yeah, that's always been. A, I never. Yeah, somebody over here that always do trellis his. So the one I'm planting is one I've never grown before. But I'm planting magnolia blossom pea, and the reason I'm growing this one here because it's a beautiful, beautiful pea. Has a, like a bluish uh, purple tendril to it, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm planting this right here just for curiosity's sake. I've heard a lot of people talk about how pretty it is, so that's the one I will. Right and they know you blossom tea, seventy days to maturity. So this one right here is going to be a good bit longer to mature than when you're going to plant. So I'm probably going to have to plant this one a little bit earlier. All right, back to the Italian, partially to the herbs here. We're going to plant some of those. You're going to transplant these, correct? I am. 75 days maturity. Mm -hmm. So we got to give it plenty of time there. It'll take a little cold weather, but you need that plant established. Right. And there's so many uses for the parsley as a garnish, actually, in your food. Um, I love using parsley. Yeah, there's not a problem not my one of my favorites. You probably don't realize you're I eating. I probably it. don't, yeah. That's more of a thing you use when you're cooking and stuff than I do. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm going to finish up with the last one that we got right here. And this is in Star Imperial Star Spinach. Now, this is about 40 days maturity. Now, if you guys like spinach out there, there's a couple of different varieties and there's a couple of different reasons for these varieties. Now, I'll expand on that just a little bit. This is Imperial Star Star is a new one that we put on last year. This is what we call a full leaf spinach. It's an Italian type that is uh, makes a big leaf there. So if you like to saute your spinach, well, this is a good one right here to use right there. I grew it out last year and it's very productive and did well for us. You can plant a short row of it and it'll make more than what you can eat. She's gonna direct seed that? Or? I am gonna direct seed, I always direct seed my I spinach. I got two more rows. So, if you wanna use a spinach, if you like to eat it in a salad, you want to use a different variety. And we have some of them like Sun Angel on our site that makes a baby leaf. Those baby leaves do better, I think, for salads. And I think these larger leaf right here does a lot better for um, for your, you know, when you, when you cook it down. So there we have it, folks. We give you some good ideas on what varieties to plant. We've got two rows left. We'll have to figure out what to put in there. I might there. put some basil in there. Basil would be good. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, you want to cover that up? Yeah. All right, so we like to cover up our seeds with perlite. Now you can use vermiculite in a pinch or either you can use the soil that you had there in a pinch. I did it for years. But the most ideal thing to use is perlite. And with this perlite, you just kind of want to sprinkle it on there because it kind of get kind of dusty. I can call thinking about it. Just kind of barely sprinkling on what you want to do is just cover up those seeds. Now for a long time, I didn't understand what the benefit of perlite is. <coughs> See, it's already getting the coffee. The benefit of perlite is these little rocks or the little uh, pieces of perlite right You're there. You put more than I am. Should I be yeah, putting just, more? No, just rack it over there. They hold moisture. Unlike what you would think, you would think it was not holds a lot of moisture, but when you get it watered in good, moisture gets inside of those, that little perlite and holds in there. And then when it releases that moisture, it creates higher humidity around the seed. And that is the benefit of the perlite. And that's the reason it works so much better for seed germination covering than other things does. Now the vermiculite will keep it wetter, but it will not release that moisture and raise the humidity like the perlite will. And the perlite drains really well too. You probably got it maybe just a little bit more down there on the end. Now there's no use in putting this underneath light right now, but just as soon as you see green folks, you want to move it underneath a glue light or either out there in the greenhouse, glue light be fine. We got a couple of grow light kits on our website there, our hanging grow light kits, what we've used for this particular one right here. 
just as soon and you can't wait two or three days but just as soon as you see that green got to get underneath ladder you're going to end up with some leggy plants there and it's really hard it's nearly impossible to straighten out the leggy plants so we just going to leave this in here nope i'm going to put this underneath a hanging grow light in the back oh okay yep once it once it sprouts okay. i'm going to put it back there and have it ready as soon as i see green i'm going to pop that light on oh beans 75, 8, well, 78 degrees is about what we keep the break room back there, and I'm going to put it in there and be ideal. So there you have it, folks. No excuse. It's time to get everything started. You know, it's going to take about four weeks to grow about all this out to plant size. So we'll have it about this time next month, ready to plant out in the garden. Maybe by then the temperature's going to be calmed down just a little bit. Maybe the night temperatures will be off a little bit, make it a little bit more pleasant out there in the garden. Mm -hmm. So put in the comments what you're starting this week or maybe next week. Yep. Let us know what you're doing. If you hadn't noticed, we're wearing some new hats. We've got new merchandise in the house with some new hats. Get dirty. Get dirty. Yep. I'm going to have to put my name in mine. You always confiscate oh, yeah, my hat. Oh, yeah, I'll get your hat. You'll get yours all sweaty and then... Yeah. All right, Garden Spotlight. From Eric Perry, Shelby, North Carolina, Zone 7, and he is growing watermelon. Looks like Jubilee or Georgia rattlesnake to me. Isn't that pretty? It is. Got pretty foliage here, and he's going to have some good eating watermelon. Looks like he got a good crop growing mm -hmm. there. All right. Thank you much, Eric, for sending that in. Shelby, North Carolina, Zone 7. He's making it happen with some watermelon. All right, folks, on the old goat, if you find the old goat on the set here somewhere, and the old goat, believe it or not, is not me, but it is a figure <laughs> rain that's on the set here somewhere. If you find it, put it in the comments below where you found that old goat, and then next week we'll do a drawing for the old goat location, and we'll send you out some wonderful merchandise. And this week's winner is Austin, I read his last name, Willoughby. Austin Willoughby. Let me get it, jump back in there on me. Austin Willoughby, send us your shipping information to cussservehallstools.com. I think we're sending out our new socks. And we're sending out some new Get Dirty socks. Mm -hmm. So send that in, Austin. We'll get you something sent out there. Okay, petals from the past. Just a few reminders here. Um, September 9th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Jemison, Alabama. It is the Great Fall Garden Festival and Meet and Greet. Um, the last count, I think there's 38 different vendors, YouTubers that are going to be there to meet and greet. And uh, also, a lot of them are going to have merchandise huh. to sell. Like Perry Hill will have their salsa and jellies and... I think Zoe from uh, Chestnut Hill Farms will have some of her baked goods. Um, I think Cog Hill may have some of his coffee. So um, it, it's, it's kind of a more than just a meet and greet. And at a wonderful Pedersen Pass, it's a wonderful garden center. It within itself is worth a trip. I think I'm getting the hang of this. You are. Um, they're going to have speakers that day. There is no fee, but they do ask that you go to the website and register just so they know that they have enough um, bathrooms and food trucks to accommodate those expecting to attend. Yep. going to be a wonderful event. We're looking forward to it. They also are going to have... Um, a harvest contest so really? you can bring um, anything that you've grown and enter it into the contest hmm. so like a country fair thing um, and all the details are on the website we'll put the description down in the link below that'll take you to the page with all these details but if you're in that area or you just want to do a short quick trip I highly recommend going to that yeah. All right, folks, thank you for joining us. Get, I want you to get all geared up about your fall garden now. I know it's been hot and it's been draining on you. It's time to pull your big boy britches up and get your fall garden going. All right, one more thing. We've got to update. <laughs> We've been holding back on the website because we they told us we didn't do the pre-sales till we got 
the new website go. But we should have, if we don't have it up by now, we should have it up within the next day or two. Pre-sales for strawberry plugs, because we've got to plant our strawberry plugs this fall. Garlic and elephant garlic. We've got six different varieties of, I think it's six different varieties of regular garlic and elephant garlic, if I'm not mistaken. So, so some we've got a great neck, selection there. one hard neck. Several hard necks, one soft neck, uh, and uh, we got some good varieties we've never had before. So we're gonna start pre-selling that real soon. If it's not on site by now, it will be by the first of next week. And you go ahead and get those bought because garlic's one of those things everybody runs out of every year. So go ahead and get that pre. So somebody asked from Tennessee. You know, we kind of limit the strawberry plug sales to certain states. We're gonna increase that some this year. And that's, he was wanting, said it was really sad. We need to go ahead and put that on the website. We are. We will have that on the website, but we are increasing the coverage there where we're going to be selling these plants this year. So all the surrounding states and more is going to be included. So we're looking that's forward great. to that. Yep. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get out of here and get fall gardening dirty.